Well, howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to talk about a laptop that is nearly 10 years old and why I think it's still uh, viable to use it in today's economy. So let's go over the specs on this Lenovo B570 real quick. This unit came out in uh, 2012, so it's already 8 years old, but as you can see, by looking at the specs on here, it's it's not a slouch. It's okay. One of the things I like about it is it doesn't use shared RAM with the video card. Uh, now, there's some question as to what video card this unit has in it. It says it's an NVIDIA GeForce 410M. Uh, that is not the case. This one has uh, actually an Intel uh, video in here, and it does have dedicated RAM, one, one gigabyte of RAM for the video. So it doesn't take away from your 4 or 8 gig of RAM. But it does have 802BGNN, uh, Bluetooth, 10100 internet, so not a gigabit, no, but no big deal. Uh, and it's got the Intel Core i3, uh, 2310 mobile, Gen 2 processor. Again, not the latest technology, not the latest and greatest. But, you know, I'm sure she paid over $1,000 for this laptop when she bought it. Um Anything to replace this that would be what I would call entry level would be around or five or six hundred dollars. You can get laptops as low as four hundred, but you know they're kind of limited as to what they can do, and they still have spinning hard drives. So the the base point for a unit with an SSD is about six hundred bucks. So if we can avoid spending six hundred dollars for a new laptop, uh, why not do it? And I would say this unit is a candidate for. One, a memory upgrade from 4 to 8 gig, and two, an SSD drive. And I think easily uh, this client would be able to get another five or six years out of this unit. Now, one of the limit one of the big downfalls of this thing is it weighs uh, about five pounds. So it's not a light laptop. Uh, you know, it's not a MacBook Pro or anything like that. It's really light on your lap, so or a Surface Pro for that matter. So be having said that, I think... We could put an SSD drive in here in RAM and we could upgrade them both for under 100 bucks. I'd say winner, winner, chicken dinner. So one of the services I offer my clients is their employees are able to take advantage of our managed services. And anytime they have a personal laptop or a home computer, as long as they're willing to bring it into the company's office that we do the MSP program for, uh, we will repair the unit is part of our ongoing service plan with our, our MSP clients. And this is one of those cases where the lady had told me that uh, her husband had dropped her Lenovo laptop. It dropped about a foot and quit working. And she wanted me to take a look at it and see if I could get the data off of it. So I'm going to show you how I found the unit, uh, how it was delivered to me. Now this is a, uh, let's see what model this is, let's flip it over. When I first turned it on, it would not boot. It didn't even recognize the hard drive. So this is a Lenovo B570. When I got into the unit, the first thing I did was remove the battery. And if you notice here, there's a gap when I unhooked the battery. So this battery is a little wonky. So it did suffer some damage, even though it was only a one foot drop. It suffered a little bit of damage. Uh, I've already loosened the screws on the back panel here, and let me show you what I found. So this is what I found. What do you see there? What's wrong with that picture? Hmm? Well, you see the hard drive has come unplugged. It's pulled forward and has come unplugged. And it's actually in there loose. So item number one is the screw is missing that holds this laptop hard drive in. And when it was dropped, it forced the hard drive to slide out. You'll also see that it has an available SODIMM slot. So uh, I'm going to recommend, if this unit is working, um, I'm going to recommend an SSD drive and an upgrade to 8 gig of RAM for this unit. And then she should get another five years out of this system easily. All I have in stock for my bench is a, is a Samsung 860 Evo. And what we're going to try and do is install Windows 10 Home on there because I want to put this laptop through its paces and make sure it's working okay. So what I'm going to do is just kind of basically, I'm going to slide this hard drive in here so it'll, it'll plug in. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put the cover back on temporarily. 
Now the parts will probably take a week or so to get here, depending on how soon the, the customer orders them. Now she also complained she was having some trouble with the battery. This is a replacement battery. This is not the original. This is like the third battery she's been through. And I told her if she can live with not having a reliable battery, because you know, you can buy these batteries and they'll fail again within a year. This one was uh, from Batteries Plus and she said it lasted about six, seven months. So I told her, look, don't worry about it. Just use the battery that's in there. Keep the unit plugged in. It's a, you know, it's a usable laptop. She only uses it at home. It's really too heavy to be anything you want to transport around anywhere, or take with you. So she's just going to go with this battery that's in it until it dies completely. And then what we'll do is uh, then she can look at getting a new laptop. But right now, the only place she uses this laptop is at home. So I've got the SSD drive in there. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to load Windows 10 Home on there and hopefully we'll be successful and then I can run some diagnostics on this unit just to verify everything is on the up and up with it. So, All right, so I'm on uh, the server. This used to be the Proxmox server and of course you know I like Windows so I put Windows Server 2019 on here. And uh, this is where I've connected up the client's uh, notebook hard drive to or the two and a half inch spinning hard drive. Now, the client was told their hard drive was bad. So what I'm going to do first is attempt to get the data off of this drive um, and copy it on to another, uh, to another location. But I'm going to go into disk management and make sure that uh, this machine can actually see it. And yes, it can. So it sees that. This is the boot drive here that's a 500 gig spinning rust hard drive. Let me maximize this out. And this is the client's disk. So they've got a, a D, an F, and an E uh, partition on there. Um, so let's see. Hopefully the drive is not encrypted. Okay, so there's the Lenovo portion. So I could back that up, um, namely the driver's. I could back up, but these are all back from 2012. So I really never save the recovery partitions on hard drives because I just don't find them useful. Just easier to load from scratch for me. The D drive is empty and the F drive appears to be where their data is. So uh, let me go to the profile. Yeah, so the, the lady's profile I'm looking for is Cindy. And uh, hopefully she doesn't have the contents of her folder encrypted because if she does without the encryption key, I can't get data off this drive. All right, so I'm going to pick up my handy dandy Total Commander program. And I'm going to go out to that F drive and I'm going to go out to the Cindy folder as administrator. Give it permission and there's all the data that I want to back up. So, um... I've already created a folder over here on my Z drive and it's called backups and I've got Cindy at ATE. So uh, in theory I could just select everything here on this side just by doing a mark select all and then drag and drop it over to the network. So we have uh, it looks like it's starting to copy so uh, depending on how much data there is and it doesn't, uh, well, uh, it, it's misleading. It's not giving me total counts of, of the data. So um, anyway, uh, we'll let the backup run. It says it's going to take about 27 minutes. So uh, I'm, I'm doing the user folder first. That way, if the hard drive craps out, if it is bad, I'll have at least part of the user data. You know, that's where everything is stored for the individual user. Uh, the other directories really don't matter uh, because we're going to be clean loading this machine anyway. So we'll let this run and uh, it says it's going to take a couple hours to do it. We'll see if that is indeed how long it takes. Well, you can see the uh, reflection of the beautiful day I'm having outdoors on the uh, screen of this laptop. But uh, I just wanted to do an update. The parts have come in. So the RAM is here. Uh, PSD 34G 1600L2S. It's a 4 gig DDR3 kit. Yeah, 1600 megahertz PC3 right there. And then the uh, 
the uh, actual SSD came in. So I told the client, I sent him a list on Amazon of the parts to order. She ordered them. They were here within a couple of days. So we've got the crucial SSD, we've got the RAM, and now we're gonna go ahead and install them. Uh, I let this machine run for overnight, running ADA 64 and didn't lock up, didn't have any trouble with it, so I have a feeling we're going to be okay. As you can see, I left the laptop kind of open. Get a different view on the camera here. Now I've already transferred the client's data, so crucial SSD. It's 500 gig. All right, so it needs to go in upside down like this, so we need to mount it in this little bracket. Go ahead and slide her in there and all the holes line up. I'm going to go ahead and get this lined up here. Then we'll slide her in. Uh, what I want to do now is get the RAM out of here. So here's the Patriot RAM. We're going to put in there. Should go here, should just snap in. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. It actually snaps into place and then we'll come back later and put the screws in. Because for now, I just wanna verify that it'll boot up, see the RAM. All right, so I did get it to boot off of the USB key finally. What it, I couldn't go into the BIOS, I couldn't do anything with the battery installed. So I installed all the components back in the hard drive and the RAM, it sees both. Um, and I was able to go into the BIOS for, for whatever reason, I think <clears throat> if this Lenovo does not detect a shutdown, but it detects a power off, it just boots it up into warm boot mode. So once I remove the battery, it put the Lenovo into what I call a cold boot mode and I was able to go into the BIOS and, and check the settings. So now, the moment of truth, we're going to see if we can't get Windows to install on here. Now this is Windows 10 Home. This unit's already been activated with Windows 10 Home, so no matter once you install it, it should activate automatically. So when it asks you to activate, just tell it you don't have a product key. And then we're going to choose Windows 10 Home. This is the download, the ISO I downloaded off of Microsoft's website. So this is version 2004 of Windows 10. I'm going to accept the license agreement and then uh, we're just going to install it on the 500 gig SSD drive and away we go. So I'll get it installed, I'll get it configured, we'll stick the battery back in and see what the uh, fruits of our labor were. So there you go, YouTube. We got uh, the SSD installed. We got the RAM installed. We got Windows 10 Home installed. Uh, we had no issues with it on the burn-in tests. I ran the burn-in tests for a couple of days, and it worked like a charm. I have since uh, taken the laptop back to the client. Uh, she took it home last night, hooked it up to her wireless network, and all is fine. So, And she's very happy with the, with the performance. She swears it's a new laptop. And just the act of upgrading that spinning hard drive um, increased the speed of this unit phenomenally. Now, will it do video editing? Perhaps. Will it do CAD work? No. But again, that's not what this client uses his laptop for. So uh, this is why, you know, a lot of people go, Joe, why are you having somebody spend 100 bucks on a on a 10 or an 8-year-old laptop? Well, you know, your your financial situation determines what you should do. And in this instance, it was a good fit for the customer, and it kept it out of the the landfill. So, uh, you know, uh, plus it makes them feel like they're getting a more bang for their laptop buck, so to speak. Uh, there's nothing I hate more than throwing away equipment that is still, you know, fairly relevant in today's world. So there's no reason that laptop can't go another uh, four or five, even six years uh, you know, as long as I, I mean, we don't want know what's coming in five years uh, as far as the need for a computer. But, you know, you have to fit 
the uh, solution to the client that you're working with. And for this client, it was a good solution. So for under a hundred bucks, they got in effect a new laptop. And, and as long as they're happy, I'm happy, right? <laughs> so there you go. In fact, I'm so confident in this laptop that I would use it as a daily driver. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and for what I do, you know, just basic Office 365 stuff, looking up stuff, doing things on the internet, it's perfectly fine for that. Uh, like I say, it is a little heavy at 5 pounds, 2.4 kilograms, I think, uh, somewhere right around there. It is, a, it is a bit of a heavy laptop compared to modern day machines like, a, you know, a, a Surface Pro or a MacBook Pro for that matter, which is quite a bit lighter. But for, you know, the day-to-day -day activity, I could use this laptop in my business. So that's why I recommended it to the client. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please hit the like button down below if you liked the video. Leave your comments in the comments section. Donate if you're so inclined. We accept PayPal and Patreon. And YouTube now has a subscription service or a join button. So look for that join button uh, underneath my videos when they play. Uh, we're only charging, we've got one tier right now. We charge a buck ninety-nine a month, which I think is more than fair. And that helps offset the cost of, of getting materials and products in to evaluate and play with uh, and for my time. So uh, it's a good deal if you can afford it. $2 a month, I don't think that's a whole lot to ask. Now, if you are in a situation where you can't afford it, especially during this current crisis going on don't feel bad about it you can continue to watch my videos we're not going to go to a pay-per-view service or anything but if you can't afford it drop two two bucks in the bucket it would be greatly appreciated and please don't forget to come and see us again and don't forget we'll see you on the other side